What's up guys, NVBC here, bringing you a tutorial teaching you how to use the Elgato Game Capture HD to stream to Twitch.tv. So guys, first off you need your Elgato software and your Elgato device and you actually need OBS which is Open Broadcast Software. If you don't have those two, you probably shouldn't be watching this tutorial. So first off guys, a lot of people are having problems where when they go to Global Source and they add their Elgato into it, when they hit preview source, well, stream, it actually pops up red. The reason why most people are using 64 bit, and you actually can use 32 bit if you're using 64 bit operating system. So, you need to make sure, guys, that you're using 32 bit OBS and it'll work perfectly every time. So, first off, guys, you need to go actually into your Elgato, soft, Elgato software and you need to click on this little wrench and hammer. What you need to make sure is whatever device you're using for one and you need to make sure you're on HD 1080p. So once you got that guys you can exit out of this program. This isn't needed anymore. And so first off I already have all my stuff saved and preset. We'll just go ahead and delete that and I'll teach you how to do one by one step by step. We'll delete them all. To add a global source guys you would actually go to global source add and you get a video capture device you can name it Elgato 2 or Elgato whatever you want to call it and you gotta give it a few seconds you would click your Elgato game capture HD you actually can't configure it right now because it can't actually pop up the software and I'll show you why here in a second I highly recommend all these settings that it's already on 30 frames 1280 by 720 is perfect and your audio input device should be used device audio obviously and output audio to stream only that's perfect and you just hit OK and it says I already have it obviously so hit cancel and you guys should have your Elgato into a global source by now and you would go to right click on this add go to global sources Elgato and you just hit OK so once you have that done guys you want to preview your stream this is an important part Okay, you guys see how this is out of alignment? It's not completely up to the size that you want it to be. All you have to do, guys, is hit Edit Scene. Boom. It becomes draggable. You just drag it to where the screen is full. You hit Edit Scene again. Boom. You got your thing at full screen. So I'm going to be teaching you guys how to get your configuration right. So all you have to do is go to Properties now that you're previewing your stream. Give it a few seconds, and you actually can hit configure now. The reason why I have no idea, it just you have to be previewing your stream before this will actually pop up. This settings right here, guys, is directly for your streaming. This has nothing to do with your actual program. So these settings have will not change the settings in your program. So you don't have to worry about that. All you have to do, guys, is where did that go? Sorry, go back to configure. All you have to do, guys, is ch check your input device. Make sure you're using your Xbox One, whatever you're using. I highly recommend your HDMI color range to expanded. And your profile is 720, obviously, HD 720, because most people can only stream at 720p, and that is completely crystal clear. If you can go 1080, that is fine, but I recommend 720. So, for my picture, I really haven't messed with any of these settings, guys. You can mess around with the saturation, that's what most people change. You shouldn't have a problem with brightness. Or the contrast and for my audio guys I kind of have it turned down to negative 18 decimals because it mixes well with my audio so you can mess around with that setting guys and you'll find the right settings for you so once you have your Elgato set up right you just hit OK next if you guys want a cool banner like up here it's very simple to do I mean you can make it you can find a preset I might make a tutorial to show you guys how to make one but for instance you would just go to add image and you could name it overlay that's what I usually name it just name overlay you would go to wherever your image that you've saved and you gotta make sure it's a PNG when you make these guys so it just clicks it just pops right over and doesn't really mess anything up so you just hit OK you don't have to mess with any of those settings boom right there's my banner that represents that represents me and my clan this is for my face cam I'll be teaching you how to do that next you just go to add Go to video capture device, you would name it cam and hit OK. 
you would find whatever webcam you're using. I'm using the Logitech HD Pro Webcam C920 series. And there's only one setting you actually have to change with this. And it's actually use buffering milliseconds. This will change the lag. Elgato automatically has a lag from the game to the audio when you're streaming. So to fix this with your webcam and your voice, you just change that to 2000. You leave all these settings just normal, guys. You can actually configure this too, but there's no point. Just hit OK. And your cam will pop up. It'll probably be full screen. What's up, YouTube? So to fix that, guys, you would just go to Edit Scene, and you would drag it down to where you need it. I'm just going to put it right there for a second, guys. You would actually right-click on your overlay and go to Order, Move Up. So this kind of overlaps the cam and gives it that better effect. You would edit the scene, drag it to where it's about perfect, that's a little too big. Just drag it over until you feel what is right, you think looks good, and needs to go up a little bit, which that's just a little too big. Dang it. I'm having issues, okay. Right there looks good. Um, I'll teach, I'll fix that later on, sorry about that. But that's how you do, that's how you add the cam and boom, you got your perfect stream. But there's a lot more settings to go over guys once you get into the actual program. So let's jump into them. You go up here to settings. And your general, you don't have to change none of this. Your encoding, this is where it gets kind of important. What you really need to use is your constant bitrate, which by clicking this. And your max bitrate guys is actually your upload speed. So what you need to be looking at, you need to go to speedtest.net, which I will right now. And you need to find out what your upload speed is. We'll go to begin test and it'll automatically find the best server. Give it a few seconds, my ping is 31. My download speed is around 42, I guess, 43. Got a pretty good download speed, guys. My connect, my internet provider is Sudden Link. If anyone was wondering, it's taking forever, guys. I'll probably speed this up. Sorry about this. I don't know why it's taking forever. We understand it's getting. I'm getting 44 down. Is it ever going to stop? Sorry about this, guys. Okay, my speed is 45. My upload speed, this is the important part. Okay, my upload speed, guys, is usually around 3. So, you can see that's going to 3. So once you find out your internet speed, guys, your upload, that's the most important part of streaming. You have to have at least a three to up, a three upload or up. So you can have the maximum or whatever you can have upload. I actually have mine set to two. So this is going to use two of two megabytes of my upload speed. So that gives me one meg to play on. That's a very important role. Um, some people actually don't use a constant bit rate, and you can change this. You can use a custom buffer rate which you can set it up to its peak and to its lowest which will this will be its average and this will be its peak but I use a constant I think it looks better overall I don't change the audio broadcast settings will save this <clears throat> your broadcast settings this is pretty important as well if you want to live stream guys you have to make sure it's ticked on live stream if you file put output only this will just save the video and I'll go back to this in a second if you're going to only save the file if you're just wanting to like have that live stream effect you would just file output only and go back to your encoding and I would turn your max bitrate up to about 8000 that would get your best quality you could go up as high as you want as long as your computer doesn't crash I just think 8000 gets about the best quality you're going to get and once you get that settled you pick your best server and obviously you want to pick whatever you're going to be streaming on which is Twitch TV for me today and I pick the closest server to me to find your stream key guys is a little tricky we'll figure that one out real quick it's not that bad once you figure out how to use twitch TV 
It's pretty simple, honestly. Oh, forgot the H. Sorry. You would go to your profile and you'd go to your dashboard. This is how you find your stream key once you've made your account. And you would go all the way to the right to stream key. And you would show your key. Obviously, I'm not going to show mine for purposes. But you just click that and it'll show your stream key here. You copy that and you would put it into there. And your auto reconnect can be 10 seconds. That's preferably all right with me. And if you want to record and save your stream, guys, you can just click Save File, and you can make a folder, which I did. It's uh, actually in my downloads, wherever my downloads is. Wait, I'm in my downloads. It's actually on my desktop, sorry. And it's in my OBS stream, which would be right there. So that's where my stream set file save. So you can do that, guys. You just tick that and select your destination where you want to save the file. When you go to video, you have your video adapter. That's my graphics card. And for your base resolution, I recommend 1080. Well, 1920 by 1080. That's full maximum resolution. And your resolution downscale, guys. Um, if you can't run at full speed because your upload is probably not the best, you can actually go down and change this. This will be like 1440p and you can go down to 1280p which is usually what I run on my internet wasn't running up to par earlier this morning so I changed it to 175 it actually looks really good as well and for your filter you can leave that as fast as your frames per second you can run 60 if you have a really good upload speed but I recommend 30 because that's what YouTube changes it to and I'm not sure if Twitch does so 30 frames per second is awesome for your audio guys well save your settings for your audio desktop audio you can leave default for my microphone auxiliary audio device I use my blue snowball I have a few microphones you probably will too find out which is your best one and click it and you can use push to talk and you can put a macro which is like a hotkey and you can just click it and it'll let you talk so you can do that and change to milliseconds for your unmute you can do that and do that and for your desktop boost is at 2. I changed my mic boost to 8. It just gives me that overall, you can hear my voice over my gameplay, mixes very well. And this actually fixes your webcam and your audio delay, which I said earlier in the tutorial. So you need to change that to 2000. That's a big key. And you'll have perfect sync, up, uh, perfect sync stream. And it'll be 100% crisp and perfect for your advanced settings, guys. You want to save your settings, obviously, in that. You just keep these in normal, change that to 800 if it is not at 800. And for your CPU preset, you can go lower and lower. That's how hard your PC is actually going to run. So you want to have something that isn't going to destroy your computer, but you want to have it smooth. The lower you go, the smoother your stream gets. You can go as low as you want, guys, but it's going to run your computer extremely hard. So I do recommend very fast. That's what I use, and it, my stream looks amazing. I use... Uh, CFR, I'm not sure what that stands for. I haven't messed with none of that. I don't mess with none of that. And that's pretty much all the settings besides the microphone noise gate. And what this does, guys, it gives you a understanding of how your mic works and what noise it picks up. Like if I hit my chair, you would hear that. This settings is probably the best 32, negative 32 by negative 37. That's probably your best thresholds. So I do recommend those, guys. And that is all you need to learn how to stream and you have this perfect video and guys this is MVBC if you are new to the channel please hit that subscribe button and smash that like button anyway guys hope you enjoyed the tutorial and have a good day